The King of the Golden Mountain. Once there was a rich merchant. He decided to load all his wealth into his two ships to the other lands to make more wealth. But alas, they drowned, leaving him poor. All he was left with was his little son and his only land left. One evening, he went to his land to relax. When he was visited by a dwarf called Mannequin. Friend, why so sorrowful? What is it you take so deeply to heart? I lost all my wealth. I worry for my son. Ask what you want, you shall get it. And in return, you shall give me the first thing that holds you when you reach home after 12 years to this date. Agreed. As the merchant returned home happily, his son comes from behind and grabs his leg. He realizes what he has done without thinking. Fear grips him. He goes to his attic and checks his money chest and finds it empty. Relieved, he thinks, since the money has not come, he will reject it when it comes. However, he returns to the attic a few days later and finds the chest full of gold. He becomes even more richer than ever before. Twelve years later, the date arrives when the merchant has to give his son to the dwarf. Son, I have to tell you something bad I've done. Father, worry not. Nothing bad will happen to us. The son was visited the previous night by a magical fairy who has foretold him about a great fortune he is to receive and what he must do to get it. Knowing this, he takes his father to the same place where he is supposed to be given to the dwarf. He sees his father and draws a circle around them. The dwarf appears and asks for his claim. A magical force stops the dwarf from getting into the circle. Good old merchant! You have got me what is mine. Now hand him over to me. I'm sorry, my friend. He is my son, and I cannot give him to you. Liar! You promised me! My friend, if you allow me, I can propose a way out. The dwarf and the father's son reach an agreement. They decide that Heisel be placed into a boat, which will be pushed into the sea by his father. So as the waves may decide the fate of the floating boat and Heisel with it. After drifting for a while, the boat gets caught in rough waters and turns upside down. The merchant feels sorrow at losing his son. The dwarf feels content having gotten his revenge. Both men turn around and disappear. However, young Heisel survives as he remains afloat on the drifting boat, which after a few days arrives at a strange shore with a very large palace and a golden mountain. Young Heisel enters the castle and finds it empty. His joy turns to despair as he searches every room for someone. Finally, he comes across a white coiled snake. He is terrified. Hello, traveler. I'm Princess Nuada. I'm trapped in this spell which can be broken if you suffer agony from 12 men who come here in the dark. You have to suffer this for three nights and the spell shall be broken. I will be back in my human form and I shall restore you as you are and marry you and bring back our subjects for us to rule as king and queen of the Golden Mountain. Heisel agrees. The men come and beat him. The spell is broken. The princess becomes human. She revives Heisel. The subjects return as they marry each other. They give birth to a beautiful baby boy and seven years pass. When Heisel thinks of his father and he wishes to see him, he tells of his desire to his queen, who foresees great sorrow if he goes. However, Heisel bugs her so much that she reluctantly agrees 
and gives him a wishing ring and gives a condition. You must never wish me and my son to your father's home. Heisel agrees, closes his eyes and wishes he reaches his father's town. He opens his eyes and finds himself at his father's town. Heisel is not allowed into town because of his clothes. He makes a deal with a shepherd and reaches his father's home, finds his father and tells him, Father, it's me, Heisel. Uh, my son died many years ago. I saw him dying. Father, see my mark. I am your son, and I am a king of a distant land. I have a queen and a son. You are my son, but you are no king. You are a shepherd, and where is your family now? The queen arrives and is very unhappy too. She is furious, but remains calm. She waits. Heisel takes her to the same shore from where he had set sail. He decides to rest on his love's legs. When the queen takes back her ring and reaches her palace with her son, Heisel wakes up and realizes what has happened. He feels he can't go back to his father as he will not believe him. So he decides to walk and find a way back to his family. Far away, three giants were fighting for their inheritance. Three objects, a cloak that makes you invisible, a pair of shoes that can take the wearer anywhere he wants, and a sword which upon being told, heads off, can kill everyone around except you. Heisel arrives here after many days of his quest and sees the objects he offers and agrees to settle the debate. He tricks the giants that he has to wear the objects to judge them and wears them one by one and vanishes. He reaches the shores of the Golden Mountain only to see a huge celebration happening. He uses his cloak and enters the crowd to realize the queen is marrying another man. He becomes angry. Heisel, wearing the cloak, reaches the great dining hall with the festivities going on, he decides to teach the queen a lesson and grabs her plate of food and her drink every time she tries to have them. The queen, worried and increasingly upset, gets up and leaves the hall to her chambers, where she cries, thinking of what has happened. When Heisel arrives and removes his cloak, the queen, though in shock, is relieved to see him. However, Heisel goes on a rage-filled rampage and shouts at her, throws things, and makes her cry. In the same rage, he enters the hall and shouts out, Subjects of my kingdom under the Golden Mountain, I am back, and this wedding is cancelled. However, he is faced with ridicule from the nobles and the people who laugh at him. Enraged, he wields his sword and screams, all heads off, except mine. The spell of the sword works, and every subject, including his beloved queen and his son, perish. He realizes what he has done, that no level of greed and anger is worth the sacrifice of one's family. He cries, goes sits on his throne as the lonely king of the Golden Mountain. The End